Welcome to Category Management Knowledge Group's course preview on store clustering through store level and geodemographic data and tools. Retailers and vendors need to take the next step toward shopper marketing by creating store clusters. These store clusters should ultimately reflect the different shoppers across a retailer's stores. From here, the opportunity is to create cluster-specific assortments, shelving, promotions, and pricing strategies that meet the different shopper needs. Here are the learning objectives for the full course. There are several hands-on workshops included that help students to practice their new learnings and learn to apply their new skills. We'll only cover a few of the objectives in this course. Let's get started. As technology and data have evolved over the years and the retailer battleground for market data has continued, category management has continued to shift and evolve. The scope of category management has evolved and expanded to include new data sources such as shopper loyalty card data, geodemographic demand, store level point of sale, and shopper insights being added. At the same time, the market has become more fragmented due to greater shopper diversity and new competition emerging across channels, including online. As a result, more new category management challenges have been exposed and new opportunities have been revealed. Store clustering and geodemographic data analysis is really the starting point for understanding shopper marketing or shopper insights. Shopper marketing refers to all manners of influencing the shopper. From when the consumer perceives a need and is motivated to start the path to purchase, to creating a shopping list or initiating a shopping mission, to researching a prospective purchase, to considering which retail avenues to shop and choosing a store or website to shop and ultimately looking at the product choices they present to make a purchase decision. Shopper marketing includes all research associated with understanding the shopper's path to purchase. Over 50% of purchase decisions are made in store. In the good old days, shoppers were trusting and easy to reach. There was also limited competition. In this environment, big brands won Big media worked, and traditional research was very effective. But now there's been a paradigm shift, driven by the multiple and blurring channels, over one million SKUs in the industry, and much more sophisticated retailers. The big challenge for retailers and vendors is to determine how to influence that 50% of decisions made in store and how to capitalize on impulsivity through strategic in-store influences. There are three primary focuses for the rest of this training course. First, we will review the key store level data sources available that are required to get to the next level of shopper marketing. Next, we will learn why store clustering is so important for retailers and some different approaches to store clustering, including creating demand indices. And finally, we will learn how to complete analysis based on geodemographic analysis. There are different types of store level data that may be available, and each of these different types of data can give different perspectives of what's going on in the store. Let's review each one in more detail. We won't go into details on these data sources, but let's look at one example of retailer loyalty data. Loyalty cards have been around since 1988, and supermarket and drugstore chains are starting to collect the massive amount of data on shoppers, from the types of products they buy to when they like to shop. Retailers are starting to track consumer trends and they're changing their merchandise, store layout, and advertising accordingly to keep their most loyal shoppers spending. Loyalty card programs are in over 30% of grocery stores. Grocery retailers are still not quite sure how to manage the data. In many cases, the internal loyalty data is skewed, 
because 62% of loyalty card shoppers have multiple loyalty cards, and many retailers offer a ghost card for non-card holders. In addition, retailers best shoppers buy 50% of their groceries in other grocery stores or channels. However, information from loyalty cards, combined with channel and consumer insights, can help retailers market in a manner that builds loyalty and profitable growth. Retailers estimate that 20% of their shoppers account for 80% of store sales, so finding out what their best shoppers want is essential. By scanning purchases, stores track what's selling, but when that data is tied to loyalty cards, merchants obtain richer information on who is buying what. Services that may seem helpful to consumers could be a way to get them to spend more. Once we review the data sources, we cover how to build retail store clusters. Retailers need to build a new set of strategies for store clusters, groups of stores that have similar shoppers, performance, and traits. Or even for unique stores, and then assemble the right resources with the right ideas and competencies to take advantage of the different opportunities. We're going to spend much of the rest of this course explaining how retail store clustering works. Store clustering groups stores together based on shared demographics and shopper purchasing patterns, and can take on new value as retailers look to localization to differentiate themselves and improve performance. There are many reasons to do store clustering. It introduces a common language to describe stores within a retail organization and helps improve store planning, assortment, and merchandising with a specific focus on optimum assortment and shelving for each cluster, category, and even subcategory. Store clustering allows you to identify the external attributes that relate to the shopper, including who they are and their purchase behavior which gives insights into internal factors that drive optimum performance for each of these groups based on a deeper understanding of the different shoppers. This ultimately results in extreme shopper satisfaction because all of their needs are being met and winning solutions for retailers. We have a chapter dedicated to the different types of store groupings and clusters and how each of the different methods are applied. In the last chapter, we review how to create measures for each cluster, and then develop corrective or protective strategies around the areas of pricing, promotion, product placement, and product assortment. The value of tracking key performance indicators, or KPIs, by store cluster is the ability to apply different performance goals to different store cluster types. One size does not fit all. Carrying on from our previous example, volume opportunity store clusters will get one set of KPIs, while hold and defend store clusters might get a completely different set of KPIs. Here are some typical store cluster KPIs that retailers may measure against. This approach to store management by a category manager allows for a more focused approach and breaks down the stores in a retail chain by their potential. Also in the last chapter for this course, we review geodemographic and location intelligence analysis. Mapping software programs give you the opportunity to layer these different types of data together to get amazing insights. By putting the different data types on a map, you can more easily visualize the outputs, rather than trying to look linearly at store-level data across a region and across multiple data sources. We've now completed this course preview on store clustering through store-level and geodemographic data. In the full course, we cover the key store-level data sources available that are required to get to the next level of shopper marketing. Next, we learn all about retail store clusters, including the different types of groupings and how to complete multivariant analysis.
And finally, we learn about geodemographic and location intelligence analysis, and the power behind mapping store level and consumer data. Moving to more strategic retail store clustering is a big opportunity for many retailers. Vendors can help retailers to move to this more strategic approach in their categories by collaborating with them in analytic projects associated with what you learn today. You've now completed this course preview on store clustering through store level and geodemographics data. So where do you go from here? If you're interested in purchasing this popular certified course, or working with us to help you determine training opportunities for you, your team, or your organization that will ultimately lead to a new level of understanding related to store clusters and location intelligence, please contact us. We don't believe in a one-size-fits-all approach and will consult with you to ensure that what we deliver meets your specific needs and business issues. We hope to hear from you soon. Have an excellent day.